again, going to Dr. Steve Pachenik. We're going to break here in about six minutes. He's going to be with us for most of the rest of the hour, uh, reporting from the DMZ. Uh, he was in the State Department uh, chairing that area previously, was involved with the Korean government, so he's been inserted by himself. Uh, he offered the government to go, which he's done in the past, and they didn't want his help, uh, but he is reporting for us exclusively and at stevepachenik.com. And so he's got some breaking news since he talked to us Friday uh, from the demilitarized zone uh, in what many analysts say could be the trigger for World War III, and the media has been saying, when well, we need a psychiatrist on the ground, he is a uh, real psychiatrist, not a quack psychiatrist, in his own words. Doc, good to have you on with us. Uh, tell us what the latest is from the DMZ. Alex, it's always a pleasure to be on, and I always come on your show because there is really a reality check uh, on what is happening. What is happening on the DMZ, it's quite cold. Uh, we've had rain and we've had a lot of uh, snow on the eastern part. What we see happening is troop movements from South Korean troops moving in uh, tanks and young 18 to 19 year old boys in the Republic of Korean Army, which basically they have to serve about 18 to 24 months mandatory service. Many of them are highly inexperienced as many of our soldiers were in the Korean War. Some of them talk to me, uh, their, uh, their uh, officers uh, try to get them away from me. I talk to them, I asked them if they were afraid. They said yes, but are they really scared of a major war? They said they're not sure because there's so much uh, war talk going on and warmongering that they feel that in the past this has not come uh, to life. In turn, I was able to uh, get access to some of the most unusual of our, uh, our own military, which is special forces. I can't identify them, but I've always had a great respect for our special forces. Since uh, 30 years ago, I was part of really developing the special forces units out of Fort Bragg into an a, a elite Delta Force unit and, and talking to them. Sure. In fact, you were involved, that's on record, in the creation of Delta Force, what, that's in 1979? Correct. That's correct. And what I talked to them about, and again, remember, I am not allowed to, I was forbidden by our intelligence organization, our State Department, our embassy, our KCIA, whom I worked with, and including the Blue House here and the uh, ROC, Republic of Korean Army, I have been totally forbidden to access anyone. So I really am doing this on my own on behalf of you and really the American public. Uh, I'm not a hero. I'm simply doing what you're doing, although I didn't read Plato and Nietzsche. And when I did, I, I had to go to a textbook to see what they meant. But let me get to the point. The point here is what one of the uh, very smart special forces soldiers said to me. He said, look, Doc, for over 20 years since the Cold War, and he knew who I was, we have not had a strategy. We have not had a complete overall world strategy. All we have been doing is reacting to situations which we sometimes create, often create through our military industry. So it's a conflict. rotting stalemate. Well, it's not just a stalemate. We get into situations which we cannot control, and this is the problem we have now. Let me make it very clear. I have worked with the North Koreans. I have negotiated with the North Koreans. I knew Kim Jong-il. I knew Kim Il-sung, his grandfather, grandfather. And let me tell you a little bit about the notion that this uh, media, including CNN and Wolf Blitzer and his, his nonsensical crew of, of morons who are saying that this is a black box. North Korea is not a black box. For 30 years, Years, we have known everything about North Korea. It's not just as a psychiatrist, but there have been other colleagues of mine in the CIA, including uh, Don Gregg, Jim Lilly, who were in the CIA and were our phenomenal ambassadors, again under Bush Sr. People underestimate how much Bush Sr. had kept things quiet, and we did not precipitate any conflicts. What happened, in effect, is we understand very well the pattern of behavior where the North Koreans, when they need help, they continuously bang, bang, and then try to get us to the negotiating table when we put on a, a, uh, a restriction on them or an embargo, and then they force us to try to come to a negotiating table with them and make concessions. At times, we would make concessions. Often, we would not make concessions. The concessions often rotated around food. The reason food is important in North Korea, and people have not emphasized this, this 
This is a country of 22 million communists who are impoverished, not just starving, but literally impoverished. And the only thing that they can do is not come over the DMZ zone, although I do see some of them trying to approach it. I do see machine gun racks in the distance. I do see their installations of artillery guns. But I'm not worried about that because I know the military uh, situation, the force structure of the North Koreans. And quite frankly, we in the national security area previously and even presently know that all of the equipment in North Korea is really antiquated. It's old 20, 20-year-old Soviet equipment. All right, uh, doctor, we got a long segment coming up. We're going to come back, give you the floor to break down what you said the danger is. And here's the big question. Is this like the Berlin Wall about to fall? Could North Korea be preparing to collapse? Because this is three, four times the rhetoric we've ever seen. You agree with that Friday. What's the real danger in the West getting into this hype, using it as a domestic political diversion? Could this cause the implosion in North Korea into China and South Korea? What does that signify? You, you said Friday this could cause World War III. We'll see the real danger straight ahead. While we fight to retain our liberty, while we fight to expose globalism, we have to realize we're talking about a very powerful combination of power. Renowned author and expert Joel Skousen breaks down the globalist plan to shut down America and stage a new world war. In one day, America will go from day to night. And if you haven't prepared in advance, there's not enough time to prepare in 24 hours, even if you saw it that early. Coming to the Info War in November is our new documentary film presentation. Strategic relocation is a systematic way to think strategically in the future about how do I safeguard. Joel Skousen, Strategic Relocation. The freeways are going to be crowded, they're going to run out of gasoline, they're going to run out of food, and then they're going to start to go north and south of those freeways. Joel Skousen is renowned as one of the world's foremost experts in strategic relocation and the securing of your home. We talk about natural disasters, the health environment, we talk about pollution, the water quality. My personal experience about being in every one of these states. Government is digging in for the organized, incremental collapse of society and world war. The U.S. isn't building huge underground bases and bunkers because of some terrorist threat. They know that a massive nuclear attack is coming. They want that attack to come. Most people won't even be ready and won't be able to get out of town when any of these nuclear weapons fall because there'll be absolute panic. There is no preparedness without strategy. What I tell people uh, is that you do have time Prepare wisely in advance. This Christmas, give the gift of preparedness. Strategic Relocation, the film, with Joel Skousen and Alex Jones. Before Dr. Pachinik leaves us, I want to uh, play a clip for him of MSNBC saying your children belong to the government. I mean, this is just authoritarianism 101. They're really making their move. I mean, they have to move to North Korea to be free once they've taken over. He's there on the DMZ. If you're a TV viewer, he sent us photos of him there uh, right on the edge of North Korea. And again, when he was in the State Department, he was uh, actually over that area. He knows all those people. That's why. He hinted when he was on a few weeks ago when this crisis was bubbling that he'd go there. And then we get an email Friday morning, I'm here, I'm ready to report. Uh, and uh, he's got a government assigned person with him. Uh, pretty amazing uh, to have him actually up there reporting on what's happening. And, and he's done negotiations with these people before uh, Kim Jong-un's dad, Kim Jong-il, so he can speak about it. You can pull it up where he was arrested once by Assad's dad in Syria. I mean, pretty wild. We got to get Pachinik on sometime. In fact, the next interview about just all the wild stuff he's done that's not classified. But, I mean, instead of just reading it in the newspaper, uh, you know, like manipulating the Red Brigades into killing the, um, the Italian prime minister who they already had kidnapped. Is that true? Is that a lie? By the way, is that true when the London Telegraph says that or is that a lie, Dr. Pachinik? What does the London Telegraph say? I don't read it. I won't read it, but let's get to the key mission. The London Telegraph's not relevant to anything. No, I understand. So you're there. What's the big... They're totally loading the, the missiles with warheads, right now, threatening Anukas. Are the missiles capable? Are the missiles capable?
capable of hitting South Korea. Are they capable? Yes. Will they do it? No. The reason they cannot do it is because they don't want to destroy the very basis of which they're going to be the part of South Korea. In other words, the overall strategy for the United States, uh, South Korea, and North Korea, and China is to have what we call a soft landing. For uh, uh, Kim Jong-un, who is not crazy, by the way, he's very predictable and he's very rational, he really has no desire to destroy anything, including the East Coast, the West Coast of America, or, or South Korea. Number one, he has a deliverable system, which is not really very functional. It's the, the missile systems are old, they're antiquated, the, what we call the single strike kill probabilities are very low. Usually they're rated at 90 percent. In his case, they're rated at about 1 percent. And uh, same with our missiles. Our missiles were always rated at 90 percent as, as single strike kill probability, but they never really got out of the silo. And when they did, they really fell on the ground. So the missile strikes itself are just using as a bargaining technique. I think Chuck Hagel, our Secretary of Defense, understands this very well. He has done an excellent job of saying, I will not put missile systems on the West Coast because it will provoke them. I think Chuck, who has understood the Vietnam War and the uh, necessity to manage pre-conflict and pre-wars, has done an excellent job. I sure. I mean, modern great. cruise missiles are the threat, uh, not antiquated uh, 1960s ICBMs that even if you have rocket scientists working on them around the clock, uh, it's very hard to get them out of the silos. These idiots can't even make a car. So it's a hoax to get food and to get oil. So if, if this is their biggest saber rattling ever, does this signify the North is preparing to collapse, which is the real danger? Well, it's, it's a good point, Alice. It's not signifying that they're preparing to collapse. It's signifying that they're afraid of collapsing because of the U.N. embargo and the fact that we have effectively uh, really tightened the amount of uh, commodities and, and uh, uh, food that they have had. The real problem for North Korea is not America, it's not South Korea. The it's real them. problem for North Korea is China. Yeah. Because China, North Koreans, 22 million, will not come over the border of the DMZ. I can see them. They've been kept away by the North Korean soldiers. And basically what's happening, they will head west into China and storm over the borders of China. So it's China who's really manipulating a lot of the situation now in order to pay back the American troops and American foreign policy for what we're doing now with Japan, because we're allying ourselves with old enemies. Japan was our old enemy. It's become a new friend. China was our old enemy, uh, our old friend, and now it's become our new enemy. The Korea, South Korea, was really an old enemy because it was part of the Japanese empire. Most people don't sure. realize that How, South Korea was started by So China. why are they doing all this saber rattling? And why did you say, Friday, this could trigger a wider war or World War III? And you well, talk because if you're not managed correctly, and fortunately we do have Hagel and we do have John Kerry who's coming here and our embassy is keeping everything cool. But the real issue underneath all of this is having somebody like myself, who I don't see, not because I'm so wonderful, but I've had 30 years experience working with the North and South Korean, understanding the psychological manipulation and the manipulation of PSYOPs. This is a complete psychological warfare. So when you hear things like that we don't understand the black box of North Korea, it's absolutely wrong. They are predictable. They're not crazy. They're rational. It's a communist Kim Chinese puppet. It's a communist. Okay. It's a Chinese communist puppet state. Not really only Chinese communist puppet. Let me let me let me make it even clearer, Alex, to your audience. Kim Jong Un has spent 15 years in Switzerland. You and I have barely spent one day in Switzerland. He has been raised to be spoiled, entitled. He's very shy. He's very awkward. He was not very smart at school. I know the exact school he went to in Switzerland because I was there in boarding school, but unlike him, I was kicked out after one week for being too American. But he is basically, we know everything about Kim Jong-un, and we know everything about Kim Jong-il because they have a, a compound in Switzerland. So you have the very rich and the very spoiled who drive Maserati, smoke Yves Saint Laurent cigarettes, drink Johnny Walker, things that we don't do, and they're running a state called North Korea or communism. In my world, the only people who can be communists or afford to be communists are multimillionaires, and that's the case with Kim Jong-un. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. total... Total uh, bizarro world, absurdism past the 10th power. So, so let me ask you this question. What yeah. do you expect 
to happen then? Because you were saying Friday it was bad management building up their power when Kim Jong uh, Un or N can't even wipe his own butt. Well, what I'm expecting to happen is if he's totally out of control and he's controlled primarily by his uncle and his aunt. The aunt is the real the sister of his father. She controls him. And then there's one other person, I don't want to get into the Korean name, who deals with the Chinese. The real issue here will be for John Kerry and for Chuck Hagel to, to get to Lee Pong of China and explain to them very quickly if they don't cease and desist to provoke uh, Kim Jong-un into this situation, serious power problems will occur in China and in the Sea of China. This has nothing to do really with Kim Jong-un. What you have to look at, what there is, is a distraction and deception that's purposely created by the Chinese against the United States. The ones who are really calling the shots are now the new leader, Li Pong of China, who is a technocrat, who also was spoiled. So He's China wants to make us take care of their problem, North Korea. The answer is laugh at them, make fun of Kim Jong-un and Dennis Rodman, instead of acting like they can actually attack America. Well, you can laugh at them. I wouldn't necessarily laugh at them. And he's a fat boy, you know, who's kind of shy. He's awkward. And, and normally in a high school in America, Kim Jong-un would be considered a geek and he would be bullied. You don't need to do that. You just ignore him. What you really do is strategically do what the sync pack, our Navy, has done, which is to cut off the Straits of Malacca, get into the China Sea, and, and make sure that there's no conflict between the Chinese, the Vietnamese, and the Filipinos over the Straits, over the China Sea oil. This is always about oil and economic opportunity. And that pirate-filled zone. When we come back, uh, how do you expect this to end? How would you like it to end versus where you think it's going? You seem more happy since you were on Friday. Uh, when you uh, are well, reporting. And, and the discrepancy it, between what we hear in the rhetoric that's absurd in the newspapers of America and what I see in South Korea where they're far more constrained. Hi, this is Mike Adams, the Health Ranger, with some news about some new additions to the InfoWars store. You know good health is freedom. When you're healthy, you're not a slave to the medical system. Everything works well, your brain, your body, even your spirit. You're a healthier person. And to help support that great health, Alex has asked me to source the cleanest, most potent superfoods and other similar products in the world and bring them to the InfoWars store. So we've done that. The brand name is Health Ranger Select. And we're starting out right now with these three products. We've got Himalayan salt from Pakistan, formed hundreds of thousands of years ago in an ancient seabed long before modern pollution destroyed much of the oceans. This is loaded with trace minerals and it's pristine, true, full spectrum sea salt. We've also got natural attitude turmeric. It's an extract of turmeric, very potent, tastes great, alcohol free. This is from organic turmeric out of India. And we've also got clean chlorella. And we sourced and, and did research on all the chlorella sources around the world. And we found the two cleanest sources that have the lowest levels of any kind of contaminants. In fact, this one is virtually free of all metals and all contaminants. It's called clean chlorella and it's, it's about two-thirds protein, and it's got chlorophyll and chlorella growth factor in it. Check it out online. It's an amazing superfood that athletes are using and people are using to help support healthy lifestyles. It's fantastic. This is all packaged in our certified organic facility here in Central Texas. There we follow USDA certified standards and we're audited every year by the USDA certifier to make sure that we comply with all organic standards. That combined with the fact that we only source super clean superfoods and raw materials from around the world means that our products represent the cleanest and most potent products that you'll find across the natural products industry. Check all of these out under the Health Ranger Select brand name at the InfoWars store, InfoWarsStore.com. And we'll be bringing you more of these in the near future. Thanks and take care. That's right, I'm in the United States, captured by six foreign megabanks who are above the law and pay no taxes. They've signed me on, and you and your entire family as well, to their 1.5 quadrillion in uh, derivatives. And they are openly trying to wreck the family, shut down competition, open the borders, take our guns, and uh, there's a new army report out, their new manual, it says Christians, period, uh, are extremist terrorists, uh, including, uh, they say Orthodox Jews are extremist terrorists, that's Fox News up at InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. And, and, and in the next segment, I want to ask Dr. Pachinik his political views, because he's a really interesting guy, 
on all the things that are happening. I know he's worked under five different administrations. Uh, of course, you can find out more about him, who's co-written some of the books with Tom Clancy uh, as the technical expert and as a composite character of the Jack Ryan so kind of the uh, Jack Ryan individual on with us right now. Uh, Steve Pachinik, Dr. Steve Pachinik is a psychiatrist and a medical doctor and wrote the book on psychological warfare uh, in the late 70s that's still the Bible used in a lot of intelligence agencies today. He's very critical of, of all the deception that goes on uh, right now today and the authoritarianism. Okay, so talk to me like I'm five years old. Friday you're saying there is a danger of war, but only because it's being overhyped and giving North Korea the idea of power, which may make Kim Jong-un toddling around like a bizarre joke actually feel like he has power uh the communist chinese are now freaking out saying don't cause problems north korea which is that a capitulation geopolitically you call it a psyop break down the different angles dr pachinik and and, and then i want to ask you a big question i'm going to ask you a big question um and of course that question is is there a way to fix North Korea? Will it ever unify or is it too bizarre? Is I mean, this guy's saying, I'll nuke you, I'll kill you, even if he doesn't have the capacity. You know, they've got DU Shabo meteor guns in space. What would happen if he was taken out? Because when somebody says, I have nukes, I'm loading, I will kill you. If somebody came to my house with a gun, whether it's loaded or unloaded, and said, I'm going to kill you, I'm not going to wait and see if it's loaded. I believe, and I don't even support war, people know that. I, I believe the guy should be taken out, but... I don't want him to be taken out. I'm saying we have a right to take him out. Go ahead. Here's the, here's the worst case scenario. The worst case scenario is what happened underneath his father, Kim, uh, uh, his father Kim Jong Il, and his uh, grandfather Kim Il Sung. Kim Il Sung uh, went overboard, and where he blew up a, an entire dais where there was South Korean officials, including uh, major uh, senior officials, and and he overreacted. But we were able to work that backwards under Kim Jong Il. Kim Jong uh, Il, his father, he had blown up ships and he had blown up an island where they use it as a kind of pro forma to show the world that they're quite serious. And hijacked yeah. and hijacked ships like the Pueblo. Correct. And also shoot down the Korean uh, airline. Now, what happens in a game like this in psycho, uh, psychological warfare, and, you know, we, we can't control all the variables, but you have to be able to estimate most of the variables, is that they literally do overreact. And the overreaction in this case would be where, in fact, uh, a missile strike could accidentally get into one of the areas that they had not intended, where, in fact, uh, one of the uh, commanders under Beneath, uh, Kim Il Sung could literally uh, decide to defect and become a renegade and try to uh, approach the DMZ, although that's not likely because it's highly mined and we have a lot of forces ready to go. In fact, in the old days, we had to hold back the Republic of Korean Army with PLO, uh, with uh, uh, oil, lubrication, and uh, petroleum. But the reality is that at this particular point in time, if there isn't that extreme uh, exercise, Size. And if we if we can't decrease the rhetoric from our news media, which is the worst part of it, because the South Korean people have been complaining to me everywhere that particularly CNN and a lot of our media are hyping up this notion of missiles and missile strikes, they find it very disgusting and very insulting because most South Koreans here that I'm working with and talking to, even on the DMZ zone, are very calm, even though they're cautious. They're calm, they're relaxed, they go through an everyday activity, they do what they have to do. They live their life normally, but they resent this overlay of warmongering that's being created by our military industrial complex and our uh, communication system. Let me give you an example. They know very well that within days of the time that we had a crisis starting, guess who came in to sell airplanes? Uh, European Airlines, the, the one that makes uh, Airbus, came in with a $7.7 .7 billion contract. In turn, Lockheed Martin came in for an F-35 Joint Strike Fighter for $7.7 .7 billion. Boeing came in for the F-15 Silent Eagle uh, contract. And then uh, the, uh, the, uh, then another one, uh, McDonnell Douglas and other company, Lockheed Martin, came in with an F-35 Joint Strike Fighter, all trying to sell to the Korean Army fighter jets that they don't need. Now, right now, they don't need it. Right now, Hyundai, Samsung, uh, LG, 
and SK, these major Zaibatsus are doing extremely well, and they resent the fact that the United States military-industrial complex and the communication systems that are run by the Northeast, the Midwest, and by the military-industrial system is imposing on them military uh, uh, requirements that they don't need and want. They want to create a society which can expand. In that process, if in fact we alienate the South Koreans who are now being run by a very effective president named Ms. Parks, who is the first uh, woman uh, president of South Korea, whose father I knew because he was assassinated right after the time I was here. I was not involved in the assassination. General Parks is very well aware of what it means to have assassination and killing. She's not interested in the assassination of Kim Jong-un. That will not accomplish anything. You cannot assassinate leaders at this particular point in time when, in fact, they're being managed by the Chinese and other countries. Sure, they'll put another involved. titular figurehead scumball, well, scumball he, in. He is, he, he's a titular head, you know. He's a kid who's absolutely spoiled, who spent time in, in Switzerland. But the real strategic issue now is who is going to control the oil and the military-industrial uh, requirements of the South China Sea, including Korea, Vietnam, the Philippines, Japan. Sure. So that so it's being used as a as a kamikaze or as a set piece, a proxy state to do this. Dr. Pachenik, you're a really smart guy, so I'm asking a real opinion on this. Where do you expect this to go? I mean, will I be a grandpa and there's the fifth hereditary dictator of North Korea, and instead no. of 30 million people like 50 years ago, there are 23 million, no. and, and there's one million of them? No, I expect that I, within the period of time that I've been here since I was involved in the transition from Chandu no no to to from military dictatorship in South Korea to civilian. You have to remember, there was a military dictatorship. Carter and Reagan sent me here, and I made that transition to civilian. Within 20 years, this country has expanded so quickly that it makes our country look pathetic. It's clean. And by the way, you're not it's bragging. Going. Every time you say this stuff, I go and look it up and find find where you were involved in the negotiating team to get rid of the military dictatorship that I was already aware of the history of, because I'm obsessed with history. And, and, and you were a key guy, get, uh, you know, like it's suggesting the psychological stuff. I was watching a documentary and it said the psychological team of the State Department recommended that they still give it one more day. And then uh, in the Camp David peace deal, it happened. And that was you. So you really have been there at so many key historical points. What scares me is what you said Friday. You offered your help a week ago before this even was really going or a week and a half ago. They didn't want your help now. Every other administration has. What does that say? Are they smoking their own dope, drinking their own Kool-Aid? No, because what it says is basically thanks to you and me and the fact that the American public has supported us. The day I said that 9-11 was a stand-down, the day I said that Bush Jr. was a criminal, that Cheney was a criminal, that our war in Iraq was a disaster and that the generals involved were criminals, the day I said that Obama came in and lied about Osama bin Laden, he lied about Benghazi, he lied about Sandy Hook, that made me persona non grata in my own country. I have a better access to get into North Korea and the DMZ zone in South Korea and even China, my ostensible enemies, than I have in my own country. My own military intelligence said to me, good luck and goodbye. I got into the KCIA U.S. Embassy, which normally affords a deputy assistant secretary a normal, you know, uh, uh, professional recognition from the past. There's no recognition. So basically, I'm persona non grata. Sure, they're scared of you. They're scared of you. I mean, in the well, land of the blind. They're scared of me. I don't particularly care. It's not about me. No, I understand. It's about not having World War III. we got to go to break. But in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. Not my king time to spring the trap? No, we must desecrate the soul and the flesh of the creator's creation. The chain of life broken forever. A monument to our beauty. Bottom line, why did you go to Korea? Where do you think it's going, Dr. Pachenik? You know, one of the most famous hostage negotiators, crisis negotiators. 
uh, out there, help get the Mideast peace deals going. What do you expect to happen? Uh, what do you expect to do, you know, see happen with the missiles being loaded, they claim? Or is that just more of a push by North Korea to get more oil and food? And if they're this desperate now, when they do fall apart, what do you expect to happen? You said implode into China, implode into South Korea. How is there any way to ever fix North Korea and get aid to those people uh, under the cult of the state? Yes. Let, 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 let me start with the first question. Number one, the day I finished my uh, interview with you, which was so grateful that on Sandy Hook, where I told you it was a false flag, I knew that Obama and his White House choir boys would start another false flag in Korea. I could see it. I could smell it. So I got on the plane the next day without anybody's permission. I was told not to go. I came here, and I wanted to report directly to you and the American public, went on to the DMZ zone and other parts of North Korea, which I cannot describe because of the past experience. And I knew that there would be a... Uh, uh, a, a uh, escalation of rhetoric and an escalation of behavior which I was want I wanted to see and monitor directly to the American public particularly the Alex Jones show because I couldn't trust the media I couldn't trust our CIA I couldn't trust our military intelligence I couldn't trust our government as simple as that and what I saw happening was that there was a total disconnect between what was being said and what the reality was on the ground here at the DMZ zone where I saw some movements but very little movements on the part of the North Koreans I had a lot of rain, a lot of cold weather, and I saw a lot of the rock or Republic of Korean Army soldiers. So that's good out. news. There's not a real mobilization to invade the South. No, there is no mobilization to invade the South. And furthermore, from past history, I know very well, as well as our military commanders do, that the 2.2 million men that are officially in the Korean Army, North Korean Army, are totally useless. They're hungry. They have no equipment. All the equipment is antiquated. The ammunition is antiquated. And they have no desire or capability to really invade through the southern section. Number two, the key issue here is not the invasion. It's really the fact that psychologically they want to create a scenario, a psychodrama, where we come back to the table, we, the United States of America, come back to the table and offer them food, assistance, so that they can have a soft landing, or the, what we call the sunshine policy over 30 years. Now, what is a soft landing? The soft landing means that we know from past experience particularly in the Bush administration, which, again, I was involved with, when we, when we amalgamated or joined East Germany and West Germany, we made a mistake in 1991 by not figuring out that East Germany had so much uh, economic burden to it that West Germany could not absorb it. In turn, we translated that problem to South Korea and North Korea. There is no way that South Korea can absorb North Korean problems and economic disorder. So how does it end then? How do you see it ending? Is there any I good ending? I see it positively ending if we get out of the way. If we stop this agitation and we stop these false flag operations, we stop this uh, incredible amount of military industrial... So bottom line, the military industrial media. complex that Eisenhower warned us about wants exactly. to keep it going to sell more weapons, but it's but all the money is worthless if we start World War Three with the chai -coms. Exactly. But uh, ironically, Alex, your audience has to understand, we lost every war. Since World War II, we lost the Korean War, and it was Eisenhower, our general, one of the greatest presidents I've ever seen, who had to come in and draw the line on the DMZ. Nobody talks about the fact that it was a great military general who had to create the peace and say, that's enough. We don't have that. We have a president who's not qualified, not competent. Instead, they just keep the wars going. Who's not qualified. Well, listen, I don't want to have war with North Korea either, and I know the globalists are corrupt. And there's all these influences, but we invade Iraq. We ship al-Qaeda to Pakistan. Pakistan. Our government's using Al Qaeda and Libya and Syria. It, it's incredible crimes going on. And then still, the North Korean clear despots go on forever. I mean, it, you know, the good die young, the evil states never seem to die either. I mean, I am just ready to see Kim Jong un hanging like Mussolini being spit on. I want to free those people, but I get it's a set piece. How could they ever transition into a peace with the South? Because we're doing it very slowly. The South Koreans have been very effectively creating like a, a military, a industrial complex. Economic zone, sure, sure. K-E-O-S-O-N-G, where 54,000 North Koreans are already working, making over $700 million to the economy. And, 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 and the North Koreans know this. But instead, what they want to do is to reaffirm the position of this little chubby fat boy from Switzerland who hasn't done anything 
and try to show that he's quite that he's in charge. In fact, only three people in charge: his uncle, his aunt, and the third person who deals with China. And the real puppeteer here is China. And if China is not warned to cease and desist, they will have problems internally. And I can help them have problems internally because number one, they have social disturbances of about 150,000 riots on a normal year in China. They have water uh, dep uh, deprecation. By the way, I agree with you. People keep saying China is going to take over. The CFR says no, that China, China is on the verge of imploding. China is in such bad, uh, is in a, such a bad state. It's worse than North Korea because at least North Korea we can stabilize. China we can't. China has now economically defaulted on loans. They've given out loans that they can't. Model sure. So let me stop market. you. Here's my bottom line. You're a smart guy, historian, psychiatrist, medical doctor, seen a lot, run black ops all over the world, brought down regimes with psych warfare. What do you expect to see with the basket case China uh, and the basket case North Korea and the West as a basket case with, with delusional decadence? What do you expect to see? I expect to see that we get a new uh, government in the United States. That's the number one issue. We cannot have another Hillary Clinton, another Clinton who lies, another Democrat or Republican. We have to reconstruct the Constitution, re-employ new leaders of our country that come from the grassroots up, particularly governors who've been very effective in running executive positions. We have to decrease our government size. It is out of control. We have to close down the CIA 9000, close down Homeland Security, close down all these unnecessary, worthless organizations that do nothing to either increase our national security or increase our productivity. We will have to increase our, our manufacturing capacity and decrease the size of our banks and their corruption. In the meantime, in China, they have a major problem. If I wanted to create the destruction of China, it's far easier for me as a psychological warfare uh, 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 expert than to maintain, uh, than to destroy uh, North Korea. All I have to do is create a war between India and China, which is what's happening now, and arm our, uh, India, arm China, and allow them to fight over water. So I'm not as worried about North Korea. North Korea will be uh, quietly brought down. Hegel has done a very good job of doing that. Kerry's coming over here and maintaining the quietness. The problem we have in America, and that's the greatest problem we have, is our national leaders since Clinton, who was a, a pathological liar and created a lot of wars and created rendition, then followed by Bush Jr., the moron of morons, who should have been indicted for war crimes, went to Iraq, Afghanistan, and then Obama, who's totally a CIA-bred and born operative who knows absolutely nothing about world affairs or running domestic affairs. He's talking about abortion. He's talking about Obamacare. He's talking about gun control. When we have to worry about national, we have to worry about our economy and jobs and jobs. And exactly. Jobs. As a Ford Foundation... In America. As a Ford Foundation infiltrator of the national security complex, he just wants to conquer America. And instead, even if they want an empire, they're going to lose the empire if they don't save the original republic. You can clearly see the writing on the wall. No amount of bullets and armored vehicles is going to save them from the collapse of the American system. And if they don't get off the back of liberty, they're going to make our engine stall and the whole plane's going to crash. Well, I'm going to have a much more... Uh I'm going to have a much more predictive element to that. I wrote about 20 years ago that, in fact, if the federal government continues to expand in size and its powers and its, and its internal suppression of our systems, we will have a potentially a second civil war between the states that, in fact, have the resources like Texas, Florida, uh, Utah, uh, the Midwest versus eastern, uh, the eastern states. Right now, the Council on Foreign Relations, all the eastern think tanks like Brookings, USIP, RAND are useless, and they're being funded by all of us to create policies that have absolutely no meaning. The West Coast is totally meaningless. I, I tell you what, doctor, idea. doctor, I want you to get some sleep. We're back on the radio tomorrow. Uh, how long are you in Korea? I will be here a few more days to serve you and our American public. All right, well, let's you get you set up. You on. Well, we'll get you set up for a report tomorrow sometime during the three-hour show. Chris, pick 30 minutes no to problem. do it. All right, thank you so much, and Dr. Pachenik. Thank you, Alex, and thank you, America. But I want everybody to understand Alex is not a conspiratorial individual. I don't think there's anybody in the mass media who really understands Plato and, and Zarathustra as well as Alex does. All I'm right, impressed. we're not going to have the good or dumb or wrong quite yet, my friend. <laughs> I hope not. The Ragnarok.
All right, uh, retransmission starts now, InfoWars.com. See you back tomorrow. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want. Mm -hmm.